So in the previous video, we saw what prevention is, defining it, the objectives and levels of prevention. We saw the four levels are primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary. We have already seen primordial where uh, you are trying to uh, prevent a disease that has not occurred in that area or country at all. Primary prevention, uh, before the onset of disease, you are reducing the probability of the disease occurring. It has already occurred in that area, but you are trying to reduce the probability of further occurrence. Now let us come to secondary prevention. Main focus here is going to be secondary prevention. So here the disease has occurred in that individual and now you are going to prevent secondary part. That is the health has to be restored here and you have to halt the progress of the disease at the incipient stage. Incipient stage. Okay. Now here you have the uh, level of intervention is early diagnosis and treatment, disability, limitation. You can write all that, right? Disability limitation. So basically, these are all by the physician, done by the physician, right? Early diagnosis and treatment, what and all will you write? Signs and symptoms you have to look for. You have to look for the change in homeostasis functions. And you have to diagnose it correctly and also suggest a treatment. Here a physician's involvement is there and also uh, he other health workers. Examples for uh, secondary prevention are very important. This is very important. Please focus here. All the he health programs by government of India like National Tuberculosis Program, nationally, National Leprosy Control Program. These are all secondary prevention. Protein, energy, malnutrition also. Okay. And then this protein, energy, malnutrition, you will write for everything. Primordial, primary, secondary, everything. Then comes to, come to other, uh, others like breast cancer. Uh, you will try to screen so that you can catch it early and cure it. Pap smears, again for uh, uterine uh, cancers. Rheumatic fever, you have to catch it at an early stage so that the person does not land up in cardiac trouble. Ultrasounds during pregnancy to prevent any incorrect growth. Glucose monitoring for diabetes, diabetics. Then contact tracing for STDs. Okay, it can also be called as SITs. Individual, uh, what are the disadvantage of secondary prevention? Basically, it is more expensive. The It needs a physical, a skilled physician. And the thing is, the person is already having disease. So, you did not actually prevent the disease from occurring. Okay. Okay. Now, let us move on to the last one that is tertiary prevention. <coughs> tertiary prevention, what comes here? Definitely rehabilitation, you know that. It is an intervention in the late pathogenesis phase. It is an intervention or uh, you can say a prevent preventive measure in late pathogenesis phase. phase. And here all measures available to reduce or limit impairment and disabilities. Again here you can write disability limitation. You can explain this further and then you can explain rehabilitation so that the person can become more productive, minimize the suffering, promote the patient's adjustment to the conditions and it will have a psychological rehabilitation also required. And examples that can you can give are for this rehabilitation of the blind, paralyzed people, crippled people, right? All these then. Again, protein energy malnutrition. Wow. Protein energy malnutrition is a standard example for all the four. Okay. Nutritional rehabilitation services, hospital treatment, follow-up care. 
So what comes under protein energy malnutrition? Nutritional rehabilitation services, hospital treatment, follow-up care. Okay. So this comes under tertiary prevention. So let's summarize what and all we saw in this prevention. What is prevention? Levels of prevention, primordial, primary, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention.